In this video, we're going to discuss inventory adjustments. Let's go into inventory and we'll navigate to configurations and product categories. Now there are a set of accounts that we have to adjust in order for our inventory adjustments to land in the right place based on our stock moves. So let's go into any one of these product categories. At the bottom of our screen, we'll see that there are input and output accounts on specific locations that have accounts that we need to set so that when journal entries get created, again, they go into the proper account. Now, one thing to note is that this doesn't matter for manual inventory valuation. It only matters for automated inventory valuation. And the reason for this is simple. Manual inventory valuations don't create journal entries. And therefore, we would just create our ending journal entry for that period as we normally would in our previous video that we demonstrated for manual inventory valuation. However, in automated inventory valuation, every stock move that moves a, uh, a location that's not an internal warehouse location is going to create a stock move. That's when products are coming in, going out, when production is registered, when there are scraps of components, when there's inventory adjustments. All of those create different journal entries, and we need to make sure we account for that. Now there are some locations, such as our inventory adjustment locations, that have accounts that we need to set. We can find them here by going into any one of our product categories and clicking on locations, or we can go through our settings. We're going to turn on routes and locations, so we'll just say multi uh, storage locations and multi step routes, which will enable a new menu option, and that will show us all of our locations. There's only one inventory adjustment location that we need to set. And here we see that inventory adjustment location, a production location, and inventory scrap location. These are virtual locations, just um, similar to our customer and vendor locations, that when products come from or go to these locations, inventory moves are created. And as a result of automated inventory valuation, journal entries are created. In this video, we're particularly interested in our inventory adjustment location. So now on the right side of our screen, we have our accounting information for this location. We can say what our incoming and outgoing account is for inventory adjustments. For example, if we count product A and product A has an extra unit in stock, where do we want that value to go? Because let's say we're using average cost and that value is $25, we need to account for that $25 value somewhere on our balance sheet or profit and loss statement. So I created a new account. It's going to be called net inventory adjustment gain and loss. Now you can set two different accounts here, one for inventory that's increased and one for inventory that has decreased. However, I find it more useful and easier to create one account use it for both the incoming and outgoing inventory from our systems based on our inventory adjustments. And then you use this information to make the appropriate journal entries, manual journal entries at the end of each month or period or any time that you do inventory adjustments to make sure that you account for this as accurately as possible. So this is an asset account. And basically what's going to happen is if I make an inventory adjustment and I say that we have one extra unit, our stock valuation is going to increase and that net difference is going to be inside of this account here. And if we lose a piece of inventory, then our stock valuation will decrease and then our net inventory adjustment account will increase. And then at the end of a period, we might need to move that to cost of revenue, expenses, um, however you see fit for your, uh, for your company. So let's take a look at an example of an inventory adjustment. So now I'm going to go into our operations tab here, and I'm going to go to adjustments, physical inventory. We have all of our inventory items located here, and they're all in our default warehouse location of warehouse stock. And as soon as I adjust our county quantity, let's say that we're doing an inventory adjustment, and we actually have for our average cost product, we actually have five units instead of three. So let's go ahead and enter five here. We'll see the differences too. I can apply that. And that move has created a journal entry for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at that journal entry. We can of course do it from accounting, but under our reports and our valuation, 
if we look at this average cost product, we'll see that there's a new stock valuation line in this stock valuation model that says product quantity updated, and we added $40 worth of value, or rather $80 worth of value, $40 per unit. And if we go to our products, and we go to the average cost product, the reason why we added $80 worth of value is because the cost is $40 and we added two units. So 40 times two is $80 worth of value added to our valuation. So now inside of inventory, or rather inside of accounting, if I look at my journal entries, we'll see this journal entry that was just created, product quantity update, product two, average cost product. And we see that our stock valuation automated was debited to increase that asset account. And our net inventory adjustment gain and loss account was credited to decrease that account. And if we look at this on our balance sheet, we'll also see that reflected, we have a negative $80 balance in our inventory adjustment gain or loss account. And our automated stock valuation has increased. So now what we need to do is move this at the end of some period to the appropriate account. This can be a uh, you know, cost of goods sold, sales, however you as a company account for this net inventory gain and loss. That's totally up to you. Now inside of inventory, if I make another adjustment, typically we're gonna do our physical inventory accounts from here, but you can also do them from the product itself. So if we went to average cost here and we went to update quantity, and we adjust this again to say our quantity on hand is three, not five. Now that is updated, and that's also going to create a um, journal entry. So under valuation, average cost, we see that we added 80 before, and now we reduced it by 80. And again, we can click on this little book here for our journal entry. That's going to bring us to a very similar journal entry. However, this time we credited our stock valuation to decrease it and debited our inventory or net inventory adjustment account to increase it, which essentially has netted this out to zero. And we can see that inside of our balance sheet in real time by going to reporting, balance sheet, and looking at our net inventory adjustment gain loss account is set to zero now. Now that's all you need to know for inventory adjustments as it relates to accounting.